shaken and stirred. James Bond's martini order notwithstanding, we can all agree that the world has shifted. And you know, it's a good thing. In many spiritual traditions, the in-your-face existential threat is welcomed, as it does more to bring attention away from the ego and into the present moment than any other method. We have an opportunity to reassess our choices, find where our actual center is, and regain a higher level of common sense. Once the reptilian brain has its heyday with the knee-jerk stupidity cortisol response, we regain our wits and start to see the world for what it really is. Our senses heighten, our intuition is sharpened, and our bullshit detectors are on full sensitivity mode. We start to see people's true agendas. We see the government's agenda and the manipulation of the controllers come into full relief. But most importantly, we see our own agendas, our own self-defeating behaviors, and how we've made excuses about accepting certain features of life we think we can't or won't change. The other overarching advantage to existential threats is how all living things come together to help those who are weaker, those having exceptional difficulties, or are dangerously freaked out. Of course, this is the first thing the controllers want to ensure, that people do not come together, do not find solace in community, and are as isolated as possible. Such concepts as disease, communicability, promoted with as much urgency and fear across all media channels as possible, shutter everyone in their homes, remove the healing powers of human connection, and isolate the individuals to stool in their own fears and darknesses. Fear is stress, and stress greatly affects immune systems. And yet, the first response to an existential threat is fear. Cortisol commandeers the energies away from repair and rejuvenation to flight or fight, tensing muscles, raising heartbeats, and narrowing concentration to self-preservation away from a relaxed view of the big picture. Controllers long ago knew the power of creating terrorized situations, and by responding to these situations with ongoing fearful worrying, we play right into the scary narrative. Of course, nature does provide us with automatic responses to keep us away from harm, but when that harm is more imagined than real, that's when it truly becomes dangerous. The reason I feel a sense of relief now is because I see people waking up, taking stock, and putting things into perspective, despite the frantic media coverages of death and destruction. I see people turning to their spirituality and becoming more aware of the connectivity of all things. By embracing the oneness of life, we experience that feeling of love binding it all together and how life always prevails despite attacks against it. The feeling and perception of love is the core of immunity. It is the connecting force binding opposites together. For every virus, there is an equal antibody. For every fear, there is sanctuary. And for every act of destruction, there is a saving grace. Fear accordances us off from the allowance of blessings, healings, and miracles. So, top priority when fear takes over is to allow the blessings of courage, intelligence, and a loving embrace to transform our experience into something greater, more beautiful, and wondrous. There is no plague or campaign of terror that can withstand such transformation. It is the hand of God, reaching in with divine touch to take away the fears, install the grace, and bring us all to the realization of our basic, immutable, eternal nature. This is the time of Jubilee. This is the time to dance. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com